today is Saturday, or actually, well, this video is for Friday, February 26th, uh, which is the, the first in two nights ayahuasca sessions. Um, and I'm still really high. Uh, I, this time I followed the diet. Last time I didn't, and I had two negative or non-existing experiences. Um, and since I followed the diet really well the first time and did have an experience, I was like, well, I guess I should follow the diet. I don't know if it actually matters or if it's subconscious. Doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a little difficult to follow, but I did have an experience tonight, so I'll say that it was worth it. Um, so yeah, following my ex, or my last two night experience, I, um, I felt like tonight if I didn't blast off or have an experience, I was going to quit ayahuasca because it's expensive and, I mean, for me because I'm broke and, uh, yeah, it, it was just like I, I know if I take three hits of acid, I'm going to have a three hits of acid experience every time. Like, no other medicine has ever held out on me like ayahuasca. Um, but I'm understanding that there's a point to that um, that's important. So, okay, I'll move along. Um, the, the circle was small, I think, since it was on a Friday. And it was um, only five of us and then two leaders. And of the five of us, I was the only woman. <laughs> so there was four men and three women, two of them are the leaders. Um, so that was really interesting because all of my other ceremonies have been like mostly female, large and mostly female, like maybe one man, if that. So I was really excited to see like how that energy would work having a bunch of guys. Um, and this time I paid a lot more attention to the, the dosages that I was getting, um, to try, you know, maybe if I pay attention, I can figure out what I need to blast off so I don't have any non-experiences again. Um, so the, when the leader was pouring the first serving for me, she was like, how much, like, what, what are you thinking? And I was like, as much as you'll give me. <laughs> and, uh, cause... Yeah, I think that I have a high tolerance, which is pretty typical for me and psychedelics. Um, so she gave me 25 milliliters to start, and then at 45 minutes she came around, and I was starting to feel like a highness, but no, not really having any visuals or an experience. So she gave me 30 milliliters, which I guess is a lot, um, and. Then, um, yeah, I kind of, like, was still getting higher. Well, I, okay, so I, I did have some, um, some small experiences. Um, one, uh, like, I've, I have frequently, like, motion stuff uh, happen during my ayahuasca trips, which I was actually, like, hoping for today, because my back is fucked up, but, um, yeah, so I got, I got a little bit of shoulder work. Um, I went into this this space that I'm now, um, I've seen, like, pretty much, well, every ayahuasca trip that there's been a visual component, um, I have been to this place, and I'm going to nickname it the Machine Elves Waiting Room, because um, it's kind of what it feels like. It's like... Oh gosh, if you ever saw one of those, um, well, like, kind of like when you first look at a page of a Where's Waldo, 
where it's like nothing is like visually drawing your attention more than anything else and your eyes just like kind of scatter and dance across it that's like how this place is except they're all like little cartoonish looking hieroglyphs or something it just feels like a waiting room but anyway um or yeah and and in that same place there's um what I I feel like is like um a healing area or a medical area like I I felt like I had uh I'm calling it psychic surgery but it felt like a real surgery but it, obviously it wasn't on my physical body but like it felt like there was like a slicing a scalpel and um I don't know like medicine or healing and um and I felt like an injection happen like on my face um but none of it hurt and it was just interesting and through all of it um I noticed that I felt um a pr like presences there it was like if I was like had extremely blurry vision and all you can and you're like you know, all you can see is, like, people's hands, um, but, like, you know that you're not alone. You can tell that someone's, like, comforting you or telling you it'll be okay, and that happened a, a couple of times tonight, which it's, it's, it's interesting to, like, just feel these distinct presences. Um, so, okay, so that was happening, but that's, and that's cool, but, like, I was wondering, like, I don't know, it feels like a waiting room, like, it's not really the experience, it's not like, I mean, I'm sure s stuff is happening that I'm not even aware of in that space, but I, it's like, this is not tied into my personal narrative or any, uh, like, part of my childhood or whatever, like, personal growth stuff, um, so that's what, that's the experience that I'm there for, so, um, the, uh, the facilitator came around and, um, offered me a, uh, 15 milliliters more, and so I took that, and I was laying there, like, it kind of felt like an experience was coming on, but I, then I kept, there was this guy in a sleeping bag that was, like, shuffling his body, like, ch -ch 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 he had one of those sleeping bags that makes noise and um and I thought that he was just having like body tremors um you know like I do but then like his uh his shuffling like he started grunting like <clears throat> and uh and then the shuffling just got like more violent and the and the grunting became more violent, and then, um, he was, uh, like, you know, there were people that had their sleeping space on either side of him, and he was, like, shut, like, moving so violently that, like, I think they were disturbed, um, and so this facilitator was coming around to do last call, and she looked at me, and she's like, let's do, let's do last call, and, um, and then she was like, well, actually, we're going to put him in, um, a bedroom, um, you know, because he was obviously, like, not, not going to, to, to calm down and was distracting people, um, which is okay to an extent, but it was, like, going on for a long time, so they were going to put him in a different room, because he just seemed to be getting more intense, and, uh, when she, okay, so then they did that. They took him back there, and, and she's in there for a while, and then the other facilitator goes in there, and then, um, and then they run out and, like, grab one of the guys, and, and I, and I can hear, so there's, like, multiple people in there in the room with him, and then I can hear him, he starts, like, he's just like having spasms like banging his body like he can't stand up and 
and yelling, um, just like expletives, like, like, fuck, shit, fuck, oh God, fuck, like, like saying that, you know, very violently shaking the whole time. And, uh, and it just got like more and more intense. Um, and like, he couldn't respond to anybody. He, like, he didn't know his name. Um, and I, I realized that, uh, he had been, um, like, overtaken by a demon. <laughs> like, that's what that was. He was completely, um, em embodying this, uh, this demon. Yeah, like, he, he was not him anymore. He was this demon. Um, and, like, couldn't, couldn't communicate whatsoever, and, like, we had to, um, you know, make sure, he, like, he would have easily hurt himself. We kind of, like, had to make sure his head wasn't bonking against the floor, and, uh, his arms were flailing everywhere. Um, so, I, uh, when it became apparent, well, so I was sitting there, like, they were dealing with him, and I was waiting for, I was, like, had, had started feeling, like, kind of slippery, like, um, like, still high from my previous dosages, but, like, so feeling, like, a little boost would just, it would be a great time to do that, so I don't have to start from ground zero, um, and... Yeah, so, so this was carrying on, and they were in the other room for so long that, like, I started not being high anymore, and I was, like, feeling resentful. <laughs> like, I was like, damn it. Um, but then, like, I don't know, it got more intense, and suddenly I was like, oh, shit, this is actually, I don't, like, I don't, I'm, I don't care about that. I, I'm really concerned about this dude. Um... Cause yeah, we were like, you know, actually like, lights on, should we call an ambulance kind of conversations? Because it was going on for um, longer than the ayahuasca should have lasted. A lot longer. I really felt like it was a full on, like, um, what's the word? Channeling? Or, I don't know. Um... Possession. Possession. Thank you. It was a full on possession. Um, and, uh, okay, so every time I went near the room, I would start immediately feeling, um, sick. Like my, I felt nauseated. My, uh, my, face and hands would get cold and clammy and I just started feeling faint like and would have to walk away like there was a palpable aura of this demon and I felt like it was really powerful like I I don't know like it really reminded me of exorcist <laughs> um and uh, I, I don't know I've done I've like gone to you know, spiritual classes about entity clearing, but I have never seen it manifested like this. Like, it's a for real thing. Um, so it was, like, I was thinking, shit, we need, like, a shaman or a priest or something. Like, hospital can't fix this. Um, but the leaders were very wise. And they, they witnessed stuff like this before and also have, you know, training on how to deal with it. So, um, yeah, they recognized that, I mean, it was the medicine working through. And, I don't know, in my, well, in my mind, I think of these demons as, like, conscious entities that are just parasites, which they sort of are, but, like, if you have a demon... It's part of you, too, or something. Like, it's a mutual agreement. Um, but, so, 
I, uh, so one of the leaders, like, she gave me some advice. She was, she was like, well, you have to meet entities with, um, love and compassion rather than, um, you know, try to push them away because what you resist persists. Um, so I, uh, since I was getting sick every time I went near the dude, I, um, I did what I could from the other room. And so I practiced my, I was, I was practicing, or I was doing cord cutting for the dude, um, and it was like, I don't know, a lot a lot of stuff and then and then I was like wait I should do cord cutting for the entity that's possessing him and and I and it was like as soon as I made that my intention like it felt way different and suddenly I felt myself like in a like confronting or in a conversation with that entity with the demon's consciousness and like it felt so big to me but when I was looking at it it was actually really small and uh and scared like it was completely driven by fear um so then I was able to have compassion for it which I don't know I think yeah, I was like, well, I could be a demon. <laughs> like, if you can, if you can, like, relate to something or, or see a piece of you in it, then it's easier to identify with it and have compassion for it. Um, which I think is really important. Um, so... Okay, so after I did that, then I, um, pretty much everyone was in the back room helping out because the guy was, you know, flailing and channeling devil incarnate. So, um, so I was like sitting in the hall holding space and they kept like trying, like saying his name and like, come back to your body and, um, and I was like, he's obviously not there. So I looked at the leader and I was like, he's not, maybe we should be talking to the entity. And then she's like, you're on, go in there. So I went in and I held his head. And uh, <laughs> so, so then I was like, you know, who are you? Say your name. What's your name? And I was, I was screaming at him and the leader was like, he can hear you just fine. <laughs> but I felt like I needed to scream like it was the exorcist. <laughs> but that, but it was, it was cool. I've got through all these, uh, you know, healing courses and attunements, but I've never practiced in the field so much because I have a lot of fear around that because I'm not sure if I believe it, so I'm not going to try to convince someone else that it's true. But anyway, I felt like I was really put in the game tonight, which was really cool because that's, um, because I was still high on the medicine and that's something I, so I got more like I could feel what was happening more like when I do the the energy healing you know sometimes it's like okay I know I have this intention and I'm moving my hands but like I don't see anything or know like have val validation that anything is happening but the nice things about psychedelics is they can illustrate that for you um you know make make energy visible so that you can actually see it working, um, and that's, but, you know, if I if I if I've seen it once, then that's like, for me, validates that it's true. So I can believe in it next time. I don't need the visual every time. 
Um, so yeah, that was a, a really great gift because I want, I feel like I have a calling as a healer and um, I've been wanting to realize that. So maybe that will lead somewhere. So yeah, the guy was um, flailing around a bunch. He he would like drift into like he would he would hear us like maybe once a minute and could answer a question and or 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 communicate with us. It was like you know ninety five percent demon talk and then five percent him. And but he kept saying that he had to pee. But he could not stand up at all, so it, um, like, oh, luckily his, one of his really good friends was there in the circle, which, I mean, was perfect and really, really nice, because he you know, knew a lot about him and was able to be, like, the right-hand man, um, on helping it through him. So, yeah, that, talking about friendship, he, like, helped undress the dude and, like, put him on his side so he could pee in a bucket, like, because he couldn't leave the room, like, that's, yeah, it, it got, it got, like, really real and, um, human -y and gross, I mean, I don't think it's gross, but, uh, yeah, it got, like, you know, put him, him in some, like, not fun situations and I really loved how there was like zero judgment from anybody it was nothing but love and compassion the whole time that he was going through this like I mean we were trying to bring him back to his body but we were like celebrating him and kept telling him that he's doing a good job and we're you know grateful to help him and it was um a really beautiful space for him to go through that um so I held his head and and you know was just whispering nice words um for a while for a long time and then I suddenly just felt really depleted and left and went and like laid down and felt all these like beautiful kaleidoscopic visions um, coming in and very soothing and um, but I felt like really like I kept wanting to go back in there to help but I every time I would stand up I immediately felt lightheaded and and was like, had to sit down and uh, that was another time that I felt a specific presence I could see like um, like a hand, like I, I stood up and, and a hand was like, no, you have to rest. And something about that presence felt specifically Native American. I don't, I don't know why, but sometimes like, or oftentimes the presences like feel like a specific, um, belief system, um, like, like Native American or like a Hindu god or um, whatever. So that was that. Um, yeah, so, oh, and uh, at one point, the, <laughs> I was, I was in the, or I, yeah, I was hanging out like, I think after going in there and one of the leaders like came in the kitchen just to hang out for a minute and and she picks up a bottle of ayahuasca and she was like you want some more <laughs> and I couldn't tell if she was joking um because I you know I didn't get my last call so uh but I was like like saw that you know I, I want to be alert and not completely tripping through this situation, so, um, so all loud, I was like, no, <laughs> but, um, but that was significant because my 
inclination if anything is to turn it up to 11 and I will rarely say no to an offering of drugs or medicine and you know if anything I say give me as much as you can but so this was my first time out outright saying no and um I feel like uh, that was I mean that that was like what the ayahuasca was waiting for like like it you know it can, I don't think that the amount of medicine that you take is, is is relevant to the experience I think that you could well you could technically have none but you could have like one dropper full and have a crazy experience or you could drink four liters and have no experience like I think it's up to, it's up to the medicine how strongly it wants to come in for you which strongly is subjective but um yeah I believe that without a shadow of doubt now like that the ayahuasca is the one controlling the volume knob um so I'll wrap up soon uh, most yeah so after after that and I rested um, I was uh, talking to one of the leaders more and I don't know just feeling like really grateful like I suddenly could see how important in like every aspect was and Like, I could see how it was all perfect and had to happen that way. And that felt good. I felt grateful for not knowing stuff. Like, grateful for incarnating and having forgotten so I can not be bored and still discover new things and, and wonder about mysteries. And, um,. Grateful to see like the 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 caregiving and the the stamina of the caregiving, especially for the leaders. Um, I mean, I got depleted and had to leave and couldn't go back, but the stamina um, was incredible. And the dude's friend, you know, like to witness that type of friendship was incredible. The way they honored each other. Um, yeah, and the medicine came on in waves. So, um, so the, the dude, uh, gradually, very gradually started coming back and, um, I mean, this was like a few hours ordeal and even when he... When he finally came back, um, you know, he was still, like, like, having random spasms of this demon energy for a while, um, and he said that during his experience he couldn't feel, or he, he like, it wasn't n nearly as traumatic from the inside, like, he, he felt really good afterwards, um, he said he felt like he was processing a lot of, uh, like, stuff. Like, he said that he was, um, like, a month before he was born, World War II started, and his mom found out about Pearl Harbor being bombed, and he, like, felt that adrenaline and that energy in the womb, and, like, that was, I guess, a memory that was triggered for him. And so he was probably working through a lot of demons around, like, war. And, I mean, he was healing for humanity, not in it for everyone. Um, so yeah, that's, that, it was, it was crazy, uh, really unforgettable. Um, 
kind of scary. I mean, I feel like I got my money's worth. <laughs> uh, I have, yeah. I'm really, really interested to see how the ceremony tomorrow will go. The guy who 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 had the demon uh, said he's changed his mind. He's not coming for the second night, which is probably a good call. Um, but yeah, it was it was like a, a incredible experience, and now I have a crazy bond with everybody who was there. Like we all made it through that and yeah people that I hadn't met before that evening like I don't know I got to see everybody's real realness yeah sweet dreams